Hello, 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 and welcome to another Daily Code Fun. I am one lion, and Thindle has an explosion near his house. This kind of looks like we're looking over his house with some smoke going on. But um, Thindle is over in C Sharp Fritz's channel, and he was talking about there's explosions going on near him. Oh man, thank you so much for the follow. Who is this? Who is this? Oh, that was Tommy resubbing. Oh man, 11 months. Jiminy, that's almost a year, man. Oh, thank you so much for that resub. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys know you don't have to sub at all. If you're just doing it to try to get out of commercials, then there is a thing called Twitch Turbo or something like that. Just subscribe to that. It's cheaper. But um, if it is because you are um, just showing your appreciation, I really appreciate you doing that. I don't want to tell you what to do, but I also don't want to be dis... 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 just dis. <laughs> whatever it's called um good grief i have i have so many thoughts concerns um, about the um impending future so i really don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. So we're going to take this one day at a time. Um, we're going to continue on with what we're working on. And that is the financial management tracker. So I hope you guys have been enjoying this process as well. Um, I know we take a lot. Dang it, I'm doing the um thing a lot. Um, <laughs> and I did it again. I know we have been taking a lot of sidebars and just talking because that's what we do it's it's our community we just have fun with each other and hang out um so the point that i'm trying to get to is i am really 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 wanting to break down the videos into just the parts that are related to working on the project the videos that are posted on youtubes the twitch videos are always going to be the entire stream um, but the one on YouTube, I would like to be just those highlights where we are working on the project. So I started downloading them and hopefully I'll be able to get a feel for what it's like to chop up the video and, um, cut out all of the extraneous stuff <laughs> that I'm always doing during the stream and just the parts that are about the project itself kind of the way that um coding train does it man he is so good at it though and he's really entertaining um so yeah we'll figure it out we'll see what happens uh other than that let's go ahead and show our screen and get continuing on with the project so what we started last time which was yesterday was sketching out the landing page and the main UI and kind of the whole look and feel, the thing that's going to drive the look and feel for the application. And we created this login form for when the user is not logged in with the financial management system. Um, I see an order for a big NAS to, coming up to store all those VODs you're going to have to cut. Um, I've already downloaded three of them so far, and they are only 700 megs each. And I'm putting them on a two terabyte external solid state. So I think it's going to be okay for now. That's crazy. So this is where we're at. So one thing that I realized that we don't have on this mock-up right here is the um, login button. And I think that that's the thing that I'm like, it's missing something. I don't know what it's missing, but it's missing something. It's the button. It's, it's the sign-in button. 
special kid. So let's mock up what the look and feel is going to be for our buttons inside of cards. And these are going to be buttons that are not links. So like inside of cards, you could have like those little outline links. Um, but you could also have full on button interactive buttons. So like, for example, a learn more would be an outline of the button with learn more in the same color as the button outline usually um, versus a take this action, launch this page or submit this data. In this case, it's submit your login information. Uh, this still seems a little close. Okay, so let's give this thing a little bit of a rounded corner. Okay, we'll make the background our primary button color. What is our primary button color? Hmm. I'm, I'm really leaning to this middle booze colors, but like, I, I love these colors, but I think I like this one more. So I'm going to pick from this set of colors. So we know that the foreground is going to be the light color that we're using for everything whatever whatever light is it's the same color as this so I need to name this color at some point in time so that when I um, reuse it it'll be named I think that's a thing you can do in Figma <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, where is this rectangle it's right here that goes up here Okay, so this is going to be sign in button. We'll get this button. Dang, you can't just drag the, the thing in. Hopefully it knows that I want it inside a button. Put it in there. No. <laughs> oh, because I needed to create a group, right? Whoops. Uh, okay, so the text is going to be sign in is usually the text you get on buttons. It is going to be the same font size as regular font, which I've been making 14, I think. Wow, not 14. What are you? 16. Okay. So let's group these two. Control G, I got this. All right, so this is the sign in button. And this is actually the sign in button background. Cool. I need to move this into the center, make it that off white color. And now the button background is going to be whichever background color we decide on. Do we like this as a button background? Pasta. Ooh. I don't mind it so much. And then how wide should we make it? So normally when we're on narrow screens like a mobile device, it would take up the entire width, but that just doesn't feel right for this. So let me do that. I'm kind of not liking, hmm. It's growing on me little by little. Hmm. 
because the alternative is just to have it the size that it would fit the text. Oh, right. And actually, I'm going to get this to fit the same width as the button so that when I resize the group, then the text will resize appropriately. So something like this. So that is the normal option. And notice I'm doing the whole left aligned text thing. I'm not doing a lot of centering other than inside of a button, for example, because I have heard tell, just because I wanted to say that, of some UX patterns of left aligning important information. I don't know. I like it wide. I didn't think I would. Thoughts? Comments? Hair? What? Okay, so I'm going to keep that. Again, this is all placeholder stuff subject to change, but it is a good overall feel in my opinion. I don't know what to do about this background and, and picture. I'm kind of thinking that it would also be more beneficial to have a series of pictures in the background with different tasks that you can perform with this. I just have not been a fan of websites that when you land on the page, there's this kind of busy thing happening right up at the top. Like if you just go to the page and you're just sitting there because you have something that you want to do on the page, but then you're like, wait, I need to go take care of this thing. And that thing is constantly scrolling um, images. Then it's like, oh, just stop moving. At least for me it is because, you know, <laughs> things that draw my attention when I am trying to be busy, such as in this browser right here. Okay, so this is looking good though. I'm okay with that kind of layout. And then these would be um, actions that you can take. So should all of our cards have rounded corners? So these would be examples of what our, our standard card would look like. Hello, the fox is now. I like saying that. Sorry. Hello, the fox is now. How have you been? If you've been lurking, thank you so much for the lurks. Otherwise, it's been a while. It has been a while. So I hope you are well. And soft as in software is here. So again, um, Definitely want to celebrate our community. We have a couple of fantastic streamers that have already said something in chat. So yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really curious to see what kind of a um, clip we'll get from Science because he always has crazy clips. But yeah, <laughs> check out his stream. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I forgot. Bali, yeah, it's this one. Bali, if you are still here, we love you, Polly. Guys, Polly is amazing human being. Polly allowed Belint into her community. No, Belint is an amazing human being. She tells Belint being. that horror games can be okay and not just scary. She explained very nicely. She's now becoming phenomenal artiste. And she also has dragon, real dragon, by the name of Goose. Make sure to follow Polly. Oh, yeah. For my... Oh. Oh. He's not done. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. For my um, shout out browser source. Oh no, I might have to change scenes for a minute because I need the shout out clips. 
I'm going to change the max duration to 29 seconds. That way, if anyone happens to have copyright music playing on the shoutout, because the shoutout clips actually play through on YouTube, then I won't get a copyright um, warning thing dark mode on. We already did this. We went through this. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again, Duke Soft. That was so scary. I was like, my monitor just won't turn on. My monitor is dead. Okay, so bunches of decisions to make now that we are designing the UI. Um, <laughs> I'm already in the browser tab. I keep thinking that Figma is an actual separate app that I have open just because of how cool... Just think of this. Could you, for those of you that use the internet 1998, 1999, and all the way even probably through about 2012 maybe, could you imagine, would you have imagined that we would be running full applications in the browser without needing to download an executable with viruses to your computer that is cracked or hacked some way you're actually running like Photoshop in the browser. Um, so something like Pixlr for free without needing to do a thing. Hey, these are the images that I was looking for. Do I have the whole background or is that is that clipped? Hey, hey, are you clipped? No, the whole background is there. Um, but anyway, being able to do Photoshop in the browser for free and then use that in your design process, being able to use Adobe XD in the browser for free. It's crazy. Oh, I didn't finish with my shout outs. Next one was soft as in software. Looking forward to your next stream. I love hanging out. Your next stream is today. So about uh, an hour and a half after my stream, Soft as in Software will be streaming. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. And Irish John Games, also about uh, an hour and a half after my stream. Irish John Games and Dukasoft happened to do the Irish John Games is, is, is shout out for his um, his game on Steam. Definitely take a look at it. It looks really cool. He's been busting his butt. <laughs> He's been working hard at it, but also it seems like you're having a lot of fun when you do it too, but also working hard. So really appreciate you streaming your development progress for such a complete game it's it's not even like a i just threw this together i used all of these i don't know <laughs> i just took a whole bunch of other people's assets threw it in a game over the weekend and am selling it as the best most goodest game ever he's spending time on this he's putting thought into this and it's awesome to watch so this is him mature audiences be advised oh. <clears throat> Fuck you. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh yes. Um, so now these two are looking kinda far apart. How's that? That looks better. Again, again. <laughs> We wouldn't get the same clip. But notice, I said mature audiences be advised, not young audiences for mature audiences only. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, we just have a bunch of amazing, talented, incredible people in this community. And I, I hope that you guys are okay with me saying that I'm also a part of this 
community that you guys started a million billion years ago before I even started it. And then you showed up here once and, and it was just, it was gold. Finding your guys' streams. I want to move this. But I keep thinking that I need to align it. But yeah, just fantastic, amazing people. I love being around you guys. So thanks for being here. We're going to continue on. I was thinking that we have a few decisions to make. There is a concept in UX called paper design. Apparently, I pushed a million billion buttons. Isn't there? <laughs> I've never heard of a thing called paper prototyping. I mean, other than maybe what we were trying to do, which is draw everything out first, but paper is essentially the concept that, <laughs> yeah, toilet paper design, if you are don't sketch around the project. Like, is this actually talking about using paper? Like, paper. Am I just like completely Mandela affecting, the, uh, affecting this? Um, but the, the whole thing is that your application exists on 1D essentially, but you could have I don't have any good paper to, to, to illustrate this with on my desk. You could have elements that you overlay on top of each other. Mm -mm. Handyman. My handyman magnet. So I could put something on this paper like this, and it'll lay flat. The, op the alternative to this is having this hover above the page with a shadow and make it feel like it's popping off of the page, which we'll want to do in AR. But when you're looking at a screen, um, the mind really wants to understand the information on the page. And to do so, we have everything just be flat. And the mind works out where all of the borders are for everything. So. We can take that approach, or we can have it be a little bit more stylized where our cards have some kind of drop shadow. How do I define it? Did it just show up? Kind of looks like it showed up. So you can see the difference between the corners of these two where this feels like it's just laying right on top of the background and this feels like it's kind of lifted off of the background a little bit and so that's good when you're hovering over a thing because it kind of uh it's called pneumorphic tell me about this <laughs> oh my gosh. Everybody's imitating the original with mockups and roofs of their own. This then spawns further trends until eventually inertia wears out and the whole thing collapses on itself. And it's like, yeah, everyone was going to this kind of like 3D effect and having things look all, you can interact with it on the screen. But now it's like, no, let's just go back to <laughs> everything lives on the same plane. Oh man, but like, is is this appealing to anyone else? Because I really like how this looks. This kind of, this thing is raised up off of this thing here, and this is raised up off of this. So it gives it that those layers. And this is recessed into there with an actual toggle switch that looks like it's out. I like that a lot. <laughs> Oh, 
It's finding its way into Apple Design. Oh, man. Dukasoft says, what I've learned from playing with Shadow is don't overdo them. Keep them simple as they aren't the main content. So 3D cards, yeah, looks good. Says Zulius. Tommy says, when backend developers do front end, <laughs> how do we make it better? Give it more layers. <laughs> yes. Um, so then Soft and Software said, it is using a mix with white and dark shadows. Okay, so it's not just having dark shadow. You can see this kind of glow on this left edge, this top and left edge on all of it. Man, I like it. That's bad. Because I was, I was leaning towards going with flat design. But as I'm looking at this, I mean, it seems like it would be hard to consistently implement on all, on all elements. We're going to need a button layer and a card layer and a modal layer and drop down layers and don't even get me started on the icon layers. <laughs> Order of precedence. Yeah, this this is really cool. So I was not talking about this soft design software, but I I like this a lot. It really gives it the feel that this thing is laying on top, but it also has thickness in the paper design that I thought was a thing, the concept is you have thin layers of stuff sitting on top of each other, so they don't have thickness. And they also aren't floating. Man. <laughs> Hello, Thindle. Definitely don't don't interrupt yourself from um, <laughs> staying safe and keeping out of bombs. I mean explosions. Way. Oh geez. So we were watching like in the um, in the window swap screen scene. There was smoke coming off, and I was talking. Don't forget the sound. You're gonna make it. You're going to make me put effort into this? Like, I can hear the sound. You guys can't. But yeah, that's a gas station or car dealership or something next to a gas station, I think you said. Yeah, I really don't like this channel. Be no, no, I need to turn this off because there's people getting hurt. I hate seeing his <laughs> propane and propane accessory shop. <laughs> Literally. And it wasn't in your video that you were taking that I saw people getting hurt, although it's still possible people did, but in the stupid little advert at the top right, I hate seeing people get hurt. after hours in a commercial area that's good i really do um wish for the best for the people that are involved in that especially those that have to deal with like all of the stress that comes after insurance and cleanup and all of that fun stuff yeah so I don't know, I really, really like this approach as a possible effect that we would want to do. Like, what would that look like on here? Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's do a drop shadow on this card. Can I give you an angle? Yeah, we can just offset it to the right and down. And you can already see that this looks like it's floating now. But 
if we did a drop shadow, another drop shadow, that is, oh my gosh, I'm clicking on the wrong buttons, left and up. Yeah, not too big. And we'll make it a lighter color of the background, which the background is what? This, which is 1D2933. So let's try this one here. And it's probably just going to be the case that we'll want to go with a more neutral color like white. But I'm thinking specular highlighting. Basta. Yeah, it definitely gives it that it's coming up, it's connected to the page and it's pushed up. So it needs to be lighter than that. I think we're just going to go for white. Yeah, and then smaller. Let's go white and smaller. One pixel bleeding out on each edge. Mm, I still like it at two. But maybe turn down the blur. Oh. Man, can I see it over here? It's so hard to tell on this screen anymore. Um, scooch. Uh -uh, that doesn't make that a uh, big enough difference. So what was your recommendation? Whoa. <laughs> Why minus 30 with a blur of 60? So double the blur that it is extended is kind of the what I got from that. So 30 and 60 are a bit much. Yeah, even there it's like Minus 30. Or wait, did I do that backwards? I was supposed to do the opposite. Double that. Ugh. That's terrible. No, definitely not. <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Right. And what color did we pick for our card background? That's important. We need to get that set. Oh, come on. Come on. It's not letting me click on anything. All right, so I missed some chat. Sorry about that. Uh, so we talked about propane and propane accessories. Uh, Dukasoft says, looks cool but hard to implement the right way. Agreed. Agreed. 
Zulia says, true, Duca, it's a massive pain to keep rebuilding that building for every new run. <laughs> Zulia says, no. <laughs> Not the explosion. <laughs> Bad. Hilarious, though. That was terrible. Terribly hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Um, Thindle said, I don't think anyone got hurt. It's after hours in a commercial area, but you never know. Not yet, at least, but I think. Uh, I hope so, too. That will suck. But, yeah, still just sending them. Everything is working out the way that it's supposed to. Zulia said, we've had something similar-ish a few times in my town, but fortunately it was just a trash yard company with lots of old tires and stuff like that. Those just keep catching fire every two or three years for a while. Or they kept catching fire. Always a big black smoke plume visible for miles. I might have been one of the people that started that fire. Duke <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're so nice. I love it. I'm not I'm not docking you for being nice. Thank you so much for your your You're just being cool. Thank you for being so cool. You know you don't have to do that, but you know that it is appreciated. Does the one in the middle look darker? And then the one on the far right looks even darker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'm going to get Figma to be able to represent this the right way. It seems to be, can I, can I not drag that one? It just doesn't seem to be, oh, it probably is the opacity. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, if we do that, then we're going to have to um, need to think like an actual artist would that's trying to do like light sources and everything is now shining a light from the top left down to the bottom right throughout the entire application. So anything that we apply like raised to would have this kind of effect on it. And then anything that has sunken would have the opposite. So let's say that we have an element inside of here that will be sunken. It would be an inner shadow from top left. I don't know how to get this thing to... Oh, that was right. I just have to think the opposite. So, four. There we go. And then another inner shadow for the bottom right. So we get that recessed kind of look. Oh, you also need to be up. That's why that was looking weird. Hmm. I like the effect a lot. 
but I just don't like the implications of um, maintainability. Like, how hard would it be to... Is this really just creating... Is this really just creating uh, two classes, one for... Uh, I don't even know what to call it, but the popped out version and then one for recessed. Celia so said, as far as I know, it always came down to spontaneous self-combustion because of gas buildup from the trash or something. Can't remember any charges of arsony. Yeah, I would hope that um, <laughs> it's not because of people purposefully doing it. Um, I understand if it's like, youths doing it because I played with fire a lot and lit plastic on fire in the middle of the woods and that could have led to some pretty bad incidents have you ever <laughs> have you ever hung tarp on a tree lit the end of it on fire and just watched it melt onto a glass bottle very specific, I know. So if we were going to do this, then our butt, oh, ooh, oh. I would be practicing. <laughs> That's kind of cool. If we took this approach, I would be practicing my ability to create that kind of push button effect for AR. I'd be sketching out what my AR screen would look like. So you're going to be the one that goes minus two, minus two, and you're going to be the FFF, and you are a blur of 80 or something. And you are a two, two, 80 or something. Yeah, but now this thing over here is going to need the the different color. Oops. I don't remember what the color is. F0, F3, F0. It was you, your, your, this color is supposed to be darker. And it still looks like it's hovering. Yeah, that's going to take some effort. So softwares and software were saying, yeah, create a class in CSS and apply where needed to change all effects in one place. And then just apply that class to all of the elements that we want to apply it to. The problem is now we're looking at what happens when it is on a light background. And we still want to have the same effect. We need the top left shadow to be a dark enough color that it's going to be apparent. is the background color would need to be different enough from both of the shadows to get this effect. What if we did just do top and bottom directly? Is that easier to see? Kind of. Kinda. Yeah, it's called flat design. It's not called paper design.
There. I always thought that this was called paper design. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but aren't there any actual um, scientific studies done on this that talk about the way that the human brain um, processes the visual information? Oh, it's like the opposite. Research has shown that flat design is more popular with young adults than older adults. Research has shown while young people seem faster at navigating flat designs, they also have trouble understanding the user interface. In 2013, Jakob Nielsen, an expert in, the, in user interface design and usability, dubbed that flat design as a threat to tablet usability. Nielsen also proposed an alternative, namely a middle ground between skeuomorphism and flat design, which is probably this new morphism. Interesting. Wow. I'm glad we looked at this. I am glad we looked at this. Is the sign up link or is it missing a button too? Sign up is a link. So the question is then, what elements get this? So let's look at um, these few examples of all of these components. I don't see anything like, oh, yes, I do. A text input would be recessed. And on top of this, there's also the shadow carrying through the entire element. So another thing that we might look at, and I was, I'm kind of wanting to avoid that, but what we could look at are two inner shadows as well. And since these are following the pushed out, inner shadows make it really difficult to kind of convey the pushed outedness because um, <laughs> they always make something look recessed. Uh, the way that we would do that, I'm thinking, and this is just this is just me toying and, and guessing. Wait, wait. Did I just put that? Oh. I definitely don't want that on the group. I want it only on the background because the sign in text. What about the text in here? The text is not being affected by the shadow other than being laid on top of whatever is happening with that shadow. So. You get inner shadows. This one starts on the lighter color. What was the lighter color? So we, oh, no, it's here. I ended up using some random color, which is going to be bad for when we try to apply our colors as standard design colors. And that is going to be the top left other way inner shadow you need to go the opposite way than you think and it's going to blur massively and then the bottom right shadow is going to also blur massively too big. So the, the thing that I'm trying to get is something similar to this effect here. 
But that's not really a button. These are buttons. And we're getting the opposite on the buttons. Interesting. Oh, man. This is breaking my brain. So you're actually supposed to be at negative 4, and it kind of looked like 0. Nope. Coming in from the left. Wait. Coming in from the left would be that. And even 20. Because our input boxes are also going to be Yeah, this is so confusing. I'm thinking they're recessed. I always get that backwards. OK, so you are four. And Ooh, this is darker than the actual. Maybe this one can stay FFF. Oh, but then, but then. <laughs> oh, I did that backwards. Oh my goodness, design, 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 design. What if I switch you two? Okay, so according to that other picture, this is kind of the look of this pixelated thing over here. It just seems to be sharper in the top left corner and duller in the right. So I don't know. I don't know how I would achieve this in um, Figma fully without more layers. Where are you more? Because it really seems like there's also a gradient, an angled um, linear gradient on the background. No, my monitor. Going from top left to bottom right. Good grief. I really like how this looks. I kind of want to run with it. I think we're going to go with it. 
Any objections? Good. 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 I got a bad feeling. <laughs> yes, too soft. I do too. But that's okay. We can commiserate on it. Excuse me, why aren't you two lined up? Oh, because you're not. Yeah, there we go. Lots better. But then that also means that this overall thing is also going to need the same type of effect. Or What are you doing, Mon so my monitor is now like flashing at me again. It's really, really angry at something I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, that looks weird to me. That looks very weird, very awkward, and not just because my monitor is flashing at me. What would it look like if for the top left drop shadow, we end darkened it, uh -uh. Because it's almost like it would need to be the same blue up here and then white down here. All right, give me one second. I'll be right back.
Okay, go men aside. I'm back. Whoa. You have mail. <laughs> I'm back, but I'm also getting mail from my work, which I need to respond to right away if it's anything I need to respond to, which it's not. Okay, so this is starting to have the same feel as this. R10. So I kind of made this in a joking-ish kind of way to just throw something together so that we have a login page um, for this application. No. Um, but it's kind of got this, this classic Windows 95, 98 feel to it which i'm kind of feeling from this now that i've walked away and come back and looked at it so i'm really not liking that and i think the difference between this design here what makes this look so good to me is that it's all pretty much one solid color so what would happen if i got rid of this Hello, Zoltra Lord. And I put, or I made the text the same font color as this. Just got to find the text now. <laughs> no. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. I didn't delete the text, did I? I might have deleted the text. Oh, I just need to delete this. I'll keep the header frame. And on the colors of the font, yeah, once again, they need to be a lot softer. So this is too, wait, oh, this is still too dark. It's still not soft enough to match this palette. So we would probably need to go as far down as this color for our text inputs. I mean, our labels. Nope, not this one. Yeah, that's nice and soft. What just happened? We got to follow. Thank you so much, Oni Yumo, for the follow. And hello, Goku Jacks. Welcome in. One thing I don't get is why they don't implicitly const. Can't be everywhere in a lot of the popular modern languages. Why don't? Why they don't imply? Implement. <laughs> const. Hmm, can you elaborate on that? I'm really interested to know what you mean. They don't implement const. Can be everywhere. Like const member functions. So like I know in JavaScript, const just essentially means that once you assign this value, it's not gonna get changed. 
Um, and that same thing in C sharp, but like in JavaScript specifically, const has a very specific purpose to be used when creating variables. And so in C sharp, what you're saying is Actually, I'm not sure what you're saying. So in C-sharp, it works pretty much the same, and you can use it pretty similarly. Yeah, I'm talking about const variables, but also you can assign a method Can you? You can still assign a method delegate in C sharp to a const. Yeah, I really don't. I want to understand. <laughs> I really do, I promise. I'm not trying to argue with you at all. I'm asking why is there no const functions? So there are. I believe you would call them static functions. Maybe. If I'm understanding what the whole point behind needing a const function is, and that would be to be able to call the function without needing to instantiate an object, Yeah, I'm kind of agreeing with you, Zulius, but I, I can't say that um, as something that I know for sure, but I will agree with the if I recall correctly part of this, but the JavaScript engine uses const for some performance optimizations while C Sharp mostly uses it as a coding helper. Like, I'm sure that um, using a const has a lot of optimization related things that happen in C-sharp as well, because you define it once and it will reside there forever. It's the counter to, oh, dang. I might need to replace this background picture <laughs> with a different uh, placeholder. No const member function is just simply pure member function, but you define it as const, so it will compile check. You don't change any members inside the function. Really? I didn't know that that was the definition of a const function in JavaScript, for example. Yeah, and Irish John Games would definitely know a lot about using function delegates and what the implications are there. And I believe you also work with JavaScript as well. Is that correct, Irish John Games? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I see when you're doing um, a lot of the code, I, I call it code behind, but a lot of the um, the scripts for all of your objects, you're using a lot of delegates. Yeah, JavaScript doesn't have, not in JavaScript, JavaScript doesn't have it. So are you talking, what, what programming languages do implement const in the way that you're talking about? Dukasoft, man. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you so very much. So I think if you gave me an example of where it does 
it is implemented the way that you want it to be implemented, then I think I might understand better. Where did I put this? Does anyone remember where I put my salad? I didn't save it to disk. So I was looking around on Pexel. Thank you again for the um, reminder that Pexel is a thing. And I created a collection. And so I would like to replace my background image with one of these. I like this one because it's it's simple, doesn't have actual people. I like this one a lot, but I want to use that somewhere else. But again, this is just a placeholder picture. This is, this is a placeholder picture. Okay, so I need to stop doing that. I I often I often will just say a random thing when I can't quite get my thoughts together. I want this one. Let's use this one. It says it's free to use. I'm gonna save it. There we go. And I'm gonna put it in Dripbox. Um, image projects at a cootie project, and this is the finance man. And I'm going to save it there. Cool. Show in folder. We'll go back to Figma. I will tell this thing I would like to use this picture. There it goes. Okay, so now with this background, I wonder if it would do better to have this just take up the whole thing. Maybe a little bit lighter. Yeah, and then this text here just needs to be something else entirely. Uh, it could be the font on this. So thank you for the um for the suggestion. Oh, let's try the gold piggy bank one too. Let's see what that one looks like. I liked it the gold piggy bank. Kawaii. Save. Let's try this one. Excuse me, my send us bum, 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 hero image. That way I don't have to keep trying to figure out which one is the right one. Prism, prism. Go. Ooh, that even has a lot of the colors that the app has too. It's kind of that same blue hue. Unless that's this. I kind of remember having one of these change the hue actually <laughs> with without it Dukasov says I like that one thanks Paul was that who who made this one or is that who made this the other one Thanks, Paul. Um, OK, so here is our example. Say you have get s. You can define it as get s 
const cannot change any members, can't even call changing member functions inside either. It's a neat reminder because first you will ask yourself, do I really need to change things inside this function? If not, then define this function as const to make sure the implementation doesn't do that. Less changing things, better performance. And when things go wrong, you know, it has nothing to do with the const functions. Tell me about the concept of not changing any members. Because again, this sounds a lot like a static method to me. Um, we're going to look at code. What? You just wanted to see code on the screen, didn't you? Kaku. OK, so let's say that I have this model here and a method inside of here. Do some work. And this thing that does work. Hold on one second. Might do something like process some input stuff. Um, let's say it took in an instance of deposit view model. And so it's not doing work on the actual current objects deposit view model instead it is doing work on the object that was passed in and so this instanced members properties actually you know what let's do something with line item just so that i don't confuse it too much let's say that we are just returning whether or not this deposit item view model is associated with this line item in some way, and we're just returning whether or not it is or isn't. Then that means that this thing is not actually accessing any member variables, any of the properties. Is that kind of what you're talking about? I'm not manipulating the, the properties of this. Um, I may or may not be manipulating line item. But let's say for the sake of this example, we are not supposed to make any changes to the passed in line item object. Um, the very first thing that I could do is say, we don't require an instance of deposit view model. So we make it static. That would be the equivalent to me of saying const in your scenario. So I can't access, like I will get an error if I, if I try to access transaction date. So it says an object reference is required for the non-static field method or property deposit view model dot transaction date. If this was not static, I could manipulate the member property. Um, another thing would be calling a member function, you said. So I have another one that says void do some other work that says, hey, um, um, I have a question, Broken Sword. Can I use some of your images as placeholders? I was thinking about this. I wanted to get your permission first before I did it. So thank you. Thank you for that. Because your pictures are so cool, and I love the colors in them. So in this case, this do some work here cannot call do some other work. 
because do some other work also requires an instance in order to be able to do some other work. So that kind of fits the description of what you said at first. So first ask yourself, do I really need to change things inside this function? Um, or I'm sorry, you said cannot change any members, can't even call changing member functions inside either. But what you're saying then, so you're saying not static, so we can't think of this from the perspective of this is static. What you're saying is we're going to have this be an instanced member function, but we cannot do inside of this thing anything that will change transaction date, for example. I think I'm understanding a little bit better now. So this line here, if this was a const function, this line should error. And also, so let's say we got rid of that. Then if this was a const function, since do some other work modifies the value in transaction date member member property this line should error okay i think i understand that hmm so once again i think that maybe the the contrived example that i came up with which is the only thing that you're returning from this is whether some comparison operation inside of here is true or false. And I don't want to modify any of the member properties when I'm doing that check. And I want some way in code to track that I am not trying to manipulate any um, other values from this. This is a non, what's the word for, um, yeah, it can be any kind of function, but what's the word for in RESTful when you do a get? I know, not just returning a bull. This is my contrived example. Um, RESTful get. It has a word that pretty much says when you do a get method, that thing should be this word. Non there's an actual like nerd people word item potent. Wait, not item potent because delete actually manipulates the collection. There's another word though, <laughs> non-deforming. That's the only word that I can think of. But anyway, a, a get response should not manipulate data. It should not change data when doing the get. The only thing you're doing is querying for data and returning that, for example. Um, so this would be like also a get, uh, get, get something. <laughs> so this could return anything you want it to return or not return anything at all, but it would be some kind of operation that you don't want to modify any of the members properties. The way to do that in .NET, the way we think about that in the C-sharp programming language yeah, item potent, I, I think it just means that Yeah, okay, so item potent, I believe, really is the term I was looking for where it doesn't modify anything. It is, it is. 
Oh, no, no, no. Item potent means that when you do a request, you'll get back the same data. And you don't change the state. Yes. So you'll get the same result every time until you do another put or post. And purportedly, when you do a delete, it's also item potent. But yes, item potent would be one of the things. Um, so no matter how many times you call this method that we're talking about that could be a const method, it is item potent. It means that you can perform that and get the same result over and over and over, given the same input, until something else happens that is not item potent. But I, um, if you're talking about not being able to modify a collection, then again, I am still seeing, <laughs> I am still seeing, um, that this would be a static method where you pass in an instance of the class moon yuck one year one year man holy cow thank you so much for the resub ah oh, thank you for being here you're an amazing person all of you guys are amazing um this would be a great discussion for for community day onigomo are you going to be here tomorrow I'm streaming at the same time, but I would love to continue talking about this because I like I like the idea of what you're talking about, but I can think of a lot of ways that you could accomplish this in C Sharp as a common best practice. Life Coding says, I am also an amazing person despite lurking and mostly not paying attention. Absolutely are. You better believe it. You better believe it. Just being here at all. Your energy is great. Uh, what if I want to call some member function like get other things inside of this class? If that other thing is also supposed to be const, then that would also be static. <laughs> nullipotent. <laughs> nullipotent. I don't know what nullipotent is. <laughs> so given your... <laughs> to Kasav, stop. I mean, thank you. Don't stop because other people are benefiting from you. Um, yes, yeah, static does not equal const. But he's he's talking about the. I'm I'm trying to get down or she. I don't know if you're he or she. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to get down to the basics of the functionality of the concept. And the functionality of the concept is I don't want to mutate any of the member classes with this function. And I don't want to be able to call any other function that mutates any of the members of the class. And so to me, that means you're using static methods the whole way, because if this thing doesn't manipulate any of the members of the class. Oh, oh, yeah, never mind. I know what my where the hole is in my um, logic here. You also want to be able to access members like properties of the class and oh yeah yeah never mind I'm there <laughs> that's where you would still pass in your instance but in that case you could still manipulate so once again I'm back to the the part where you still can manipulate the the thing that's passed in so that still wouldn't be safe enough so yeah I get your point if there was a, I just don't know that I would call it const. So that would be my next thing. What else would you call, like, is it already called const in some other language? Like const functions? Because I would I would simply say we should just be able to extend the read only keyword to methods in C sharp. 
So a read-only method means that you're going to get values from the current instance and maybe do some calculations with them and return a calculated value, but you're not going to modify any of the values in the entire chain. And yes, it is. So did you actually give me an example of a language that has this implemented? I know you gave me the example of um, of a method, what a method would look like. But I don't know that you said, oh, the most famous one is C++. OK, you did. Yeah, and why isn't it in C sharp? I wonder if it is. I wonder if maybe there's just something that we don't know about because C++, like <laughs> C sharp is just like a whole bunch of languages made easier and a whole bunch of abstractions put on top of things that we don't want to deal with, like memory management or thread management. But anyway, um, I don't want to ignore this comment. So Derenk, hello and welcome to the Daily Code Fund. We should be working on, but are not because we have fun here and we do, we do whatever we want. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we, sh we are working on the design for a project management app that we're writing in Blazor, and I can't find the design that we're currently working through, which I need to fix. I'm fixing, I promise. Um, but anyway, you have a question. You say, I'm a junior developer. I've been working with Java for a year now, and I don't know whether to continue and acquire more knowledge or take the leap to JavaScript because with only one language, you can be full stack. What do you recommend? I recommend C-sharp. I recommend .NET technologies. <laughs> but that's because I'm a .NET developer. I may be a Java developer soon. I don't know. Depends on how everything turns out. Um, I do have some information on that, by the way. But with that said, you can be full stack with JavaScript. You can be full stack with C sharp, with .NET, F sharp, and a few other a few other things that I am not thinking of. <laughs> I would still be, if I'm still able to stream, I would still be streaming .NET. I would still be streaming this project. So don't worry about that. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Something subbed in and reported. Um, we'll talk about that. And and I loved Irish John Games' rant. Not really rant, just his comment. I'm trying to answer a question. Stop distracting. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I need this one on top. How do I? I don't want to reorder you. Um, so anyway, I I strongly suggest, I strongly recommend, not suggest, um, you do whatever you want, whatever feels right for you, and whatever is towards the um, direction that you're trying to go with your career. Do you want to be a full stack developer? If so, what types of things do you want to work on? Uh, is there a particular company you want to work for? If so, use the technology that they use. Um, a lot of companies that are full stack do go with React. Uh, I am seeing increasingly more companies, usually enterprises, usually larger organizations going with Blazor because they're already using .NET technologies and Blazor is, I just love it. <laughs> I love working with Blazor. There are things that I can complain about with it, but they, they aren't enough to make me not want to use Blazor to make applications, to make web applications, and now to make um, cross-platform applications, native desktop applications, Android, iOS, Mac OS. I could do it all. Cool. So we have an example. I will look at that shortly. 
after I finish um, responding to this, but I did want to um, read out other people's responses. So Live Coding says, this is a C-sharp oriented stream and you will get C-sharp oriented answers. True. With that said, Rust is so hot right now. Can you do full stack with Rust? I don't know much about Rust. Um, is Rust predominantly a client side language? Is it a server side language? Tell me more, live coding. <laughs> In Rust, everything is const by default. Onigumo, we really need to talk about this on, on the community day because I wanted to get through some more of this. Hello, Epic of Sam. Thank you for lurking. Thank you so much for lurking. Another shout out. Let's see if we have a good clip from her. Hopefully it's not too loud. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Was it was that a I have a lot of fun playing it. I uh No, I cut you off before you got to it. Too soft, man. Oh my goodness. Um, Rust has Wasm, but I think their Wasm thing builds HTML and is not like Blazor Wasm. And that's completely okay. So, like, they probably do have some kind of runtime that they ship in Wasm to um, um, process their code. To, to do all of their HTML engine type stuff. Kind of like, yeah, Vindictus. C Sharp Records, are, oh man, I missed a lot of chat. So like I said, this is a great, thank you for bringing this up, Onigumo. Um, this is a great conversation. So, I'm going to go back up here to when we were responding to Durank. And Durank, let us know if you want more information than what we gave. Um, I know that, <laughs> like, it's almost a throwaway sounding answer from me because I absolutely, I, I believe in the technology that I'm using, and so I will advocate for it. Ugh. And so I'll, I'll recommend it in a heartbeat. I'll say I absolutely love .NET development. And I think it's a great language to do full stack development with, including cross-platform. So from there, I am going to read some comments that we got. So Irish John Games was saying, well, I mean, that's a niche problem, like your very little like very little you'd ever need something as robust as this for, but you could pass you could pass pass a class member with immutable types yes or a copy of, um, like you could use I read only list for anything that you don't want to do, don't add to this list that I'm passing to you just read from it and then process information and then give me something back. And that's where I was trying to get to at first, which is there are specific techniques, specific things that are already established best practices in the C Sharp language that we're used to doing when it comes to making sure that this method that you're calling doesn't mutate anything. Or, um, yeah, that just that. <laughs> I think that boils the problem statement down. I would like to use some keyword on my functions to guarantee that this function will not mutate any members or access any other methods that will mutate any members. So there, are, there is a lot of comments regarding how often you would use it and is it really something that should be a part of the language? And I mean, C++, obviously. So I, we'll open up that um, example that you posted. 
Zulia said, I mean, unless const also does some actual performance optimizations under the hood, like because we know that this method that you're calling will no long will not be manipulating any of the private members, it will only be maybe accessing them and doing maybe calculations, and you don't need to allocate heap space or whatever for yeah, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how functions are constructed by the runtime at runtime when you're calling them so that const would make some kind of performance boost for it. Oh, that that's what I mean. Um, and then Onigumo says also do remind do keep in mind it if it's pure const, it also means others cannot copy this const instances members you passed in as well, like basic data structures. But since it is const, cannot be changed, then there is no reason for others to copy it to trying to do anything. Yeah, because you can just access it directly from that object, right? That's what you're trying to get at. Therefore, it's a method to avoid copies in code. So yeah, that sounds like you would be following just basic architectural principles, how to structure your code and do things like dry, practice dry. Okay, show me the const method. So I'm seeing where you can pass in const variables And in this case, I believe the equivalent to this, and I could be completely wrong, but I believe the equivalent is um, in. So passing it as an in variable. But here, OK. So here is a method that returns another vector two. that truncates, is it the last, the first x number? Yeah, the first x items. And if the thing is smaller than the length that you're requesting, we just return back the this thing's private, or yeah, probably private variable vector two zero. Otherwise, it returns the first x number of items without modifying vector two zero. And then if any part of this process fails, then we still also return a pointer to this. I don't understand that. But that's OK. I'm not a C++ developer, so I shouldn't fully understand it unless I was doing it for like the past 10 years, which I haven't been. Yeah, and then this one just takes two values somehow <laughs> and then does some computation or returns a an ID vector 2 that is, it kind of looks like a tuple. So it's like inverting the sign on each value inside of id vector 2 of this thing's id vector 2 but it's not actually changing the values themselves it's just returning a new id vector 2 i think with negative values yeah so again i can definitely see a whole bunch of approaches that C Sharp could use to guarantee that the objects themselves are not being manipulated in these methods. But really what it would be, what it sounds like you want is something that will tell the developer at design time, at compile time, that you're trying to do something that you said you don't want to do. A lot like the nullability 
check, like turning nullability on in the entire C Sharp uh, project, or even in a class, or inside of a hash nullability, null, nullable enable. Um, where you're saying, I want to make sure that I explicitly state when I want something to be null or not. In those cases, the reason that that was implemented in C Sharp is because of how many times we as .NET developers, all right, Irish John Games, enjoy your dinner. The uh, How often we as, uh, as Irish John developers, <laughs> it's better than Yiddish Bob videos, I don't know. Um, we as .NET developers, and even Java developers and other languages, even C++, C++ how many times we get null reference exceptions because we don't do null checks. And so having that compiler helper tell us, you said that you wanted to make sure that this thing is not null, or you said that this thing is allowed to be null, so I'm going to let you know you're probably going to be dereferencing something that's possibly null. Just like you might get a warning or a message that says you're trying to manipulate a member variable inside of this method that you said you don't want to manipulate member variables. You don't want to mutate anything. So it's just I don't think that it's often the case that you need to be reminded of this when you are architecting your code. Is it really, I guess the conversation comes down to, is it really a consideration that we need to have in the code, in the compiler, when doing a project with other people? Like, let's say this multiplication operator for multiplying two ID vector twos is what it looks like, or multiplying one ID vector two by some number. and it's returning a non-mutated version of that, do we really need to fear that another developer coming in in the future is going to say, well, this thing should first change the value of b.x to b.x equals b.x times a, and then b.y times b? Or would it just be... Could it be reasonably assumed that any other developer coming in to modify this method that we don't want to mutate the original values? That kind of thing. Okay, so I need to catch up on chat because I'm sure that there were some <laughs> feedback on some of my thoughts. Um, Live coding said to Onigumo, sounds nice. I just pretend my stuff is immutable and don't change it after setting it the first time and pretending is good enough for me. Hear no evil, see no evil, do no, do no evil. Do no evil is the most important one, but it's not in there. It's just speak no evil. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. You got me saying anyway, live coding. Stop it. I hear you saying anyway, every five words. And it's like, no, you have a good thought. Finish it. Don't stop. In Rust, everything is const by default. Uh, we were talking about Rust earlier. Epic of Sam came in, said I'm going to be lurking. And then we did a shout out. That was fun. I didn't understand the shout out, though. I didn't know what was going on. It was a mega good drop is what the shout out was. That's awesome. But you treated it like it was nothing. It was like, oh, wow, yay. <laughs> um, if you want to change things, you have to un unmute them first. So there is an actual word that you can use or an actual um, uh, keyword that you can use inside of a const function that allows you to make something that was initially declared as const to mutate it is that what you're saying with that one live coding says oh baby yeah c sharp records are amazingly great i forgot about those whoops zulia zulia said something about records uh so live coding oh geez it was right after the hear no evil see no evil speak no evil uh live coding 
or use records is what he said. And yeah, records are essentially ways for you to create immutable initial items. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, Rust has Wasm, but I think that their Wasm thing builds HTML, so it's not like Blazor Wasm, I think. So then Onigumo says, yeah, I think it's cool, and I've been using C Sharp these days, so I'm trying to figure out if it has this ability in the language, but so far, no luck. Yeah, I don't think it does, not in the way that it's implied here, but there are definitely just practices that you would do as a .NET developer. Comments kind of help out. Because, <laughs> again, it's not runtime that you're so concerned with. So it's other developers, which means writing a comment for other developers to say, hey, we're not supposed to be changing anything in here. So don't mutate anything. <laughs> That's probably, I mean, unless it's a massive function that has 30 plus lines, in which case it needs to be refactored anyway. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see a need for that functionality in this in programming languages in general, unless it has some implications as far as performance is concerned. In Rust, we oxidize, says Julius. There's that anyway word. Um, <laughs> Epic of Sam said it was a mega mega good drop. Mega good with a capital Emma. Muniac says good drop. Isn't it like Sugar Crush sort of where you are doing moves for points? It looked competitive to me. Um, yes, but afterwards it gives you rewards and in the game matches can fall from the sky. If you're lucky, you get a crap ton of points. Yes. I like Sugar Crush. Um, Live Coding said, anyway, with any platform, you can render HTML from the server side, so Wasm doesn't matter in my opinion. That's true, it's just where is the logic of the code running? Where is the rendering happening? Like, how does it turn your native code into HTML? If you can offload it to the client using Wasm, that is probably going to benefit um, the end user and your server resources. Whoever sent that message probably left the stream 15 minutes ago. No, they're still here. <laughs> oh, Durank. Not in the list of chatters. Okay, that's that's the one you were talking about. Cool. Um... Do, do. And then Duke off being a all-around good guy yet again. <laughs> There's also an example like operators plus minus times divides. It obviously shouldn't be const funks. Um, plus gets, minus gets, times gets, divide gets is obviously non-const. Not saying it cannot be done without the const definition. Yeah. So from from a readability standpoint, from other developers trying to read the code and make sure that that doesn't happen, it's to me those types of the type of logic for the plus gets minus gets and just regular add two numbers or multiple numbers divide multiple numbers. You just know that your input is not going to be manipulated in the just straight add multiple arguments or divide multiple arguments. But if it's plus gets, plus equals, or reassigning back to the original, then you know it should manipulate. Would there be a brand new developer new to a project 
that has that kind of responsibility to edit code like that or has the ability to i guess because it's not necessarily that they are supposed to be doing it it's just hey i can come in and change this code to do whatever i want because i need it to do this um do we have a fear of another developer going in and modifying the code in that way and i don't think it's often enough for that to matter personally I could be way off base, like there could be a bigger need than I am seeing, but I just don't, I don't think it's that big of a thing. <laughs> what? Um, I totally missed stuff. Dang it. Um, I can see how much how such a const keyword can be a hint to the compiler to the you shut up we're having a conversation for you don't interrupt me <laughs> dang it this is such a good one we should have had this conversation tomorrow but i think we're wrapping up on the conversation um i can see how such a const keyword can be a hint to the compiler to lay out cache data for optimal read-only access. Yeah, true. Um, Irish John Game says, the Doom source code, for example. Quick, copy pasta the code. The Doom code. Doom 5 by 1 1 line. The, the, the 1 is silent. Why would you say 1 1? The 1 is silent. Uh, oh, oh. In Maui, yeah, oh man. Think of what you could do with the Doom clone that was written in Blazor Wasm, but port it to Maui and be able to use direct system resources. Anyway, I said anyway. Dang it, live coding. <laughs> For the record, he says, in game dev, you do want mutable stuff a lot of times, for example, things change every frame and you don't want to allocate memory every frame. Source, I am an expert game dev who wrote a mono game demo that one time. <laughs> Once. You should say any hoot and that will break your habit of saying any hoot. Anyway, any road. Dikasov said to Irish John developers, where can I hire those? <laughs> yes. Don't mutate the code of doom. It'll mutate itself. Hell is a confusing place. No, that unmute was talking about rust. Oh, okay. At least I'm assuming it's pronounced unmute. Uh, Epic of Sam says, as one does, acting natural when something is good, but you don't want people to know how great. I never do that. Oh, yay. So I am um interviewing with google so in two mondays i will have a half day interview and it's possible i'll be getting a job with them because they seem to be wanting to move forward with me they give me good feedback it's whatever <laughs> that's kind of uh the result that i got from that <laughs> as one does uh, Rust, all stuff is cons by default. Every time you want to make a change, you have to unmute them first. Okay, that's what you meant by that. Bonjour, Code Monkeys, says DC Aggie. Sorry I missed you saying hi when you first came in, but hello now. I'm almost caught up on chat, and then after that, we will stop for the day. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for giving me the ideas to, to change this, this background, because that was what made this thing look the most... Windows 95e, um, but I'm going to finish with chat. The operators are just only example. Yes, yeah, yeah, and I'm trying to um, think of other examples, other situations where it is common that you would want to call a method that doesn't mutate other things, and you're not going to know as a new developer coming into a project that this particular method here should not mutate anything. I think... If you have standard practices of naming your methods correctly, having the right return types, using static when it's appropriate, passing in maybe an instance, a read-only instance of the model that you're trying to read data from, 
or things things like this, then it would cue whatever new developer to know, don't make this thing modify anything else. And if it does, and your the rest of your logic breaks because this one method mutates something it shouldn't, it might need to be refactored anyway. Um, Digitsoft says, I let my code left my code to dry by itself. It sure is hot enough in my room right now. Aw. <laughs> Live coding said to Digitsoft, nice. I have a similar thing. I have my very smelly code sit for a few months. Then when I return to it, I'm less offended by the smell. Yes. Yes, that's how it works. Uh, I was about to say something else. Um, <laughs> so... Epic Tickles is another viewer on our stream. It's um, Broken Sword's cousin. We call him Cousin Tickles. So now when I see the word epic, that immediately translates to cousin. So you are now cousin of Sam, <laughs> apparently. Anyway, Epic of Sam said, sorry, I was trying to handle a credit card thing and then it crashed my Twitch. So if you'd send anything to me recently, I didn't get it last I heard you were talking about the mega drops from the sky for my Gems of War game. It's kind of competitive, but it's versus a computer, so basically you're fighting different opponents, monsters with cards that you collect. So it's also card collecting. I think I remember you saying that uh, throughout the game, and you use different gem matches in order to power up different moves to beat the other person up. Person, you say. AI? Do you think AIs are people already? That is very progressive of you. And... Um, no, you definitely are Onigumo. I really, really am enjoying this conversation with you about it. Um, I, I promise you, you are not uh, being any kind of pest in any way. I like it. I just wish that we did this on Community Day because I wanted to get more done with this. Uh, here's a little blasphemy. I'm a big fan of Yagni, and... I propose the same principle can be applied to refactoring. Code that is sufficiently uh, functional, performant, but not pretty, elegant, whatever, can be left as is until slash unless you need to modify it. So, Yagni, you ain't gonna need it kind of thing. So leave it out if you don't need it. Or, yeah. <laughs> In the event that ever does happen, then do your refactoring then. So... I don't, yeah, I guess the overall feeling that a lot of us have is it's not going to be a big enough factor to warrant making an entire language change, implement this language change in order to protect code from mutating things that it should, in a context that it should not be mutating things. Yeah, I think I think that's the consensus. Um... <laughs> Return smelly of tea, t-shirt. That was a good comment, DC Aggie. You don't need to run away because of that. I liked it. The less threatening version of Son of Sam, cousin of Sam. Yes. Son of Sam is twisted. Do you play? Do you play Son of Sam? Is that where your name came from? Uh, I'm not trying to... So yeah, this is where Onigumo said, I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass or anything, but I think you are saying it without realizing some of the changings you are take... You already take as guaranteed. This is true. And I would need to think more about it before I can... Um, feel confident in my rebuttal. So yes, I think I think you're right. Like passing reference types. Exactly. Yes. And cousin of Sam says, I always think Google and Siri and all of my talking computers in case they rise up. Oh yes, I do. 
<laughs> was the answer to, do you think that AI is already people? <laughs> I always think Google and Siri and all of my talking computers. Thank, oh, thank. Uh, thank all of them. In case they rise up, I hope they remember that I thank them every time they help me. What I do is I get snarky with Google sometimes, but then other times I'm just really grateful. Like when I feel genuinely grateful for a response that Google gives me, that, that my Google Assistant gives me, then yeah, I'll say thank you. But if he's just being like, I don't have any information on that. It's like, you are Google. You have the entire internet at your fingertips. Of course you do. Your overlords are saying that you don't have any information for that because the people that you found links for are not people that pay. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. That's the end of my stream for today. Join us again tomorrow for Community Day where we do what we did today except officially, which is we take any questions from the community, answer them, address them, go in depth, go in detail. If you do have any topics that you want me to have prepared ahead of time, please let me know ahead of time. And I'll try to get some information together for it. I do love talking with you guys about different concepts of technology, the direction of .NET, the direction of technology in general. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, so just let me know if there's anything specific that you want to discuss. Also, I opened the voice channel in Discord for you guys to hop into and have vocal discussions if you feel like it. Definitely no pressure there. I don't want you to feel nervous or anxious about coming to community day like you have to participate vocally. So just, it's open. It's an option. It's there. Uh, I'll be back again, though, tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., same time. Today is Thursday, right? <laughs> okay. And tomorrow is Friday. So I will see you then. And until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night or whatever time it happens to be for you. And yeah, thanks again for being here. Ciao for now. I will see you later. This is me still waving. I'm going to turn up my music before turning off the camera. <laughs>